Very pleased to be joined now by one CEO, Chatri Sitchatong. Chatri, what a night that was, just full of epic finishes, epic fights. How pleased are you to witness such incredible martial arts tonight? I, I thought the majority of fights were outstanding. People came in with a killer instinct, uh, displayed phenomenal technique and obviously finishing abilities. Uh, I was disappointed uh, by a couple of fights. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the fights I was very disappointed at judging again. Would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, no, I thought Ekaterina won easily. Um, and, uh, you know, she staggered uh, Supergirl and, and, and the judges got it wrong. And, and we're going to have to work with different judges. It's, it's just, uh, um, they just, they've made errors, uh, especially in the striking stuff, you know, in my opinion. You right? But, I mean, I, I mean, people might disagree with me, but I, I, I thought Ekaterina won. I don't know what the judges were watching. Have you spoken to them? What's the fallout going to be from that? I haven't spoken to, no, to, to any of the judges. No, I haven't. Is there going to be any repercussions there? I mean, we'll just try to find uh, work with, you know, uh, um, uh, more uh, experienced judges, I guess. I, I, you know, I, I haven't talked to the team. That was some absolutely crazy. You know, we, we do spend a lot of time trying to um, fly in all the best judges from around the world um and you know during this obviously during the tougher times when borders are closed we've had to make do uh and and, and recruit local judges here and there um, we still fly in obviously some some judges but it's, again it, it depends on the country that you know um Shongqing Nan in the main event what an incredible champion she's cleaned out the division she spoke about not getting the knockout in her post fight how did you assess the main event and how incredible of a champion is Xiong Jingnan? Another piece of history for her, that's six times now. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think she is the best straw weight in the world. Um, but I'm, to be honest, as a, as a, you know, fellow martial artist, I was disappointed uh, in her performance again. I think she could have finished um, the fight, but she didn't show gameness. You know, she didn't try to finish the fight. Um, yeah, so I, you know these things happen i understand but yeah i was i was disappointed especially with the added incentive right now uh with this bonus we heard a few fighters mention it we've heard tiffany cho mention it sagid is as well on the mic who really impressed you in that regard tonight uh well i'm giving out two uh bonuses tonight uh fifty thousand dollars goes to sagid i thought uh he had performance and gameness uh phenomenal technique i mean the highest level and game is, you know, finishing instinct. Uh, and the second person I gave is to uh, Ekaterina. Um, I thought she displayed again, high level striking, world championship striking. That She's obviously a world champion in Muay Thai and kickboxing. Um, and I, she showed gameness and she showed toughness and, and, and technique. So uh, those are the two winners. I want to ask you about Sagid some more because as debuts go, have you seen anybody come and attack the one circle in the way he did and be so dominant in their first performance for the promotion. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it was very impressive. Uh, you know, when I spoke to Khabib, uh, when we were thinking about signing Sege, he said, Chachar, this is the best fighter at his weight class on the Eagles fight team. He said, Chachar, this guy, you know, obviously he's trained since they were kids, but he said, this guy is an absolute animal. And um, when you look at the technique, when you look at, you know, I mean, just, He's also a monster lightweight. I can't believe he's a lightweight. He's huge. Um, and for him to dominate, you know, a world-class wrestler like James Nakashima, um, and James has been working his grappling, you know, relentlessly and upgraded it for this fight and still got dominated completely. Sagi talked about James being the toughest test for him in the division. We heard him call out Shinya Aoki. We heard him call out Eddie Alvarez. What fight do you like for him next? I either one. I mean, I we'll have to go talk to the team. Uh, but I think Shinya versus Segid would be amazing. I think uh, Segid versus Eddie would be amazing. Um, yeah, those, those are, are, are incredible fights right there. Uh, meanwhile, we want to talk about the fact that, oh, we have a question coming in from Dylan Bauka of My MMA News. Go ahead, Dylan. Appreciate you taking my call. I'm just kind of curious with, you know, Zhang Jingnan clearing out the strawweight division. I think a lot of people maybe thought if Meng Bo got the victory, that could represent a contender. So to that point, would the next step be an Adam weight title shot for Zhang Jingnan against the winner of Stamp, Angela? Yeah, I mean, I think people want to see the trilogy fight uh, between uh, Jingnan and Angela. Um, I will say that we have signed uh, a bunch of strawweight, um, world-class strawweight, real contender type of 
uh, material. We haven't announced them yet, um, but we've signed uh, several incredible female athletes in, in the strawweight division. So she has cleaned out the current straw weights, but there is a whole new slew of a whole army of new world class straw weights that'll be uh, a handful for Jingnan. But I think, um, yeah, one of the things I think we would love to see is potentially the winner of. You know, Angela and Stamp face uh, Jingnan, but again, I, I'd have to talk to the athletes. I, I really, you know, we, have, we haven't, um, yeah, we just got done with the event. Plus, you know, to be honest, like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, I mean, Jingnan used to be a knockout artist, come with huge gameness, you know, real killer instinct, and, and her last two performances, you know, um, it hasn't been the same Jingnan. It's been very flat, very cautious and safe, which is not her nature as a person, uh, as an athlete. And, and uh, it's very surprising. And also just speaking of straw weight in a different combat discipline, I was kind of curious the status of that straw weight Muay Thai title. Cause when we were talking, you seemed keen on getting Jackie Boontan in that kind of a situation. Like, what do you think about that? Do you see like there being a rematch with a Katarina for that inaugural title? Are there any tentative well, plans? Well, first of all, you know, I, um, I think I'm going to order an immediate rematch between Ekaterina and Supergirl. Uh, just because again, like I, as someone who's been doing Muay Thai for 35 plus years, I can tell you Ekaterina won that fight um, easily. I mean, it was not even close. Um, so I just don't know what the judges were seeing or, you know, I just, yeah, I have no idea what they were judging. Um, you know, Ekaterina rocked um, Supergirl twice, almost finished her. It was literally one punch, one kick away from finishing Supergirl. Um, and mind you, Supergirl is super tough. I was so impressed with her warrior heart and, 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 you know, staying power. But, you know, technically speaking, Ekaterina had m more volume, more accuracy, and two near finishes. Um, I, I just don't see how she lost that fight. But again, I'm not a judge. The judges have a tough job I, 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 and I respect it. And, and, you know, at one, we do try to work with the very best judges across all disciplines from around the world. Uh, we fly them in, but at the same time, you know, I, I just, I mean, I know Muay Thai. There's one thing I know is Muay Thai. Ekaterina won that fight. Appreciate the insights. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dylan. Our next question comes from the Philippines. Randolph B. Leongson of Spin.ph asks, how big of a motivation do you see the additional 50K prize being, and how big will it be for the next one event? Have you heard the reactions from the other fighters who weren't part of this card tonight? Well, you know, the $50,000 bonus, again, at a minimum, we're going to give one, at a maximum, we give five per, per, per show, every single show, and it goes across all different martial arts. So whether it's MMA, Muay Thai, kickboxing, submission grappling, et cetera, all the different martial arts we feature, um, you know, this is, this is really added incentive. And again, uh, we look at it from two criteria. One is performance, meaning displaying martial arts technique at the highest levels in the world. And second is gameness, um, having that finishing killer instinct every second of the fight, looking for the finish and not trying to coast, not trying to play safe, not trying to, you know, um, to go back to the true essence of what martial arts is about, right? As I said in my pre-fight speech to our athletes, martial arts is about finishing a self-defense situation. It's about protecting, defending yourself, whether it's on the street, you know, in the gym, in competition. Um, and I want to make sure that our athletes have that spirit. I mean, we have a 71% finish rate, which is the highest in the world amongst the top three uh, major global players. Um, so, you know, our martial artists do come to finish fights. Um, but I, I think um, one, A, uh, I wanna make sure we, we are able to reward uh, the very best of our roster. But at the same time, of course, I, I wanna make sure we reward our fans. Our next question comes in from Jason Burgos of MixedMartialArts.com. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Chatry, a great card today. Uh, I have three questions for you. Uh, the first one being, um, I asked you this separately. Um, any news, anything new on the possible US TV deal with one? So I can tell you that we're in the final stages of negotiations uh, with three broadcasters. Um, and we should be making an announcement, you know, I don't know if the next few weeks, next several weeks, but uh, imminent, uh, you know, we're imminent. Since we you know great news that uh, for one X is going to be a live crowd, a, a sold out crowd. Is there any plans to do events in 2022 outside Singapore or will Singapore remain the home base, at least through 2022? No, uh, we're looking all over the world again. Um, and definitely, you know, right now we do have plans to throw an event in the U.S., uh, given that we have a U.S. broadcast deal that's about that's imminent. 
Um, and so, no, uh, we're hoping uh, Omicron, um, you know, eventually, you know, I think the data shows that Omicron is not nearly as serious as Delta or the prior versions, um, whether it's hospitalization, oxygen, whether it's mortality rates, um, Omicron. But, you know, hospitals around the world are getting flooded. Um, but it does look like um, there will be a spike and then a, and a dramatic drop off. So uh, our team is looking um, not only all across Asia, but all over the world for our, for our event schedule. And, you know, we look forward to be announcing some of, uh, um, yeah, we look forward to be make, make, making some announcements regarding our full year 2022 calendar. All I can tell you is this, um, 2022 will be the biggest year in the history of one uh, by far uh, in terms of uh, what we have planned uh, for events and for, you know, all, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, the last question I had was just regarding a lot of people were surprised about the whole Arjun Bowler situation. Could you give any more depth on what was the cause of for, cause, you know, leading to an interim title? And is there kind of a cutoff date? Like if things can't work out at a certain point, would he possibly get stripped of the title? Uh, so, uh, you know, he was, Unfortunately, you know, um, Arjun's manager was not uh, the most, um, how can I be very polite about this? Um, I would say that the, the manager was combative and, and, and arrogant, uh, a manager from CAA. Uh, I won't name the name, um, but um, the negotiations went up to the head of sports of, of CAA, uh, Nez Balos, who is a phenomenal guy and, and, and he and I get along very well. So, uh, you know, uh, he, he's, he has a very, much same mindset as as we do at one in terms of win-win we want to make sure that our athletes are paid well we want to make sure that our managers are, are taken care of we also want to make sure that it's very a fair deal for one and i think you know uh nez has that lens and so we are we have light at the end of the tunnel i'll tell you that uh but it was stuck for a good six maybe more maybe nine months with a i would say an incompetent manager but it, they swapped it, but but but, they, but they've swapped them out so Thanks for your question. Next up, we're going to go to Nick Atkin of SCMP MMA. Hello, Andrew, and hello, Chatri. Um, great event. Um, I'm sorry, but I missed the beginning. So I, I, I don't, have you already announced the bonus winners, or does that come after this? Yeah, yeah. Fifty thousand dollars goes to Seguid, and fifty thousand dollars goes to Ekaterina. Okay, okay. Sorry for that. Um, I was interviewing Tawan Shai, but uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know if you've also been asked about this this double card that's coming up for One X. The second card you said, Chatri, in your Facebook post is going to be a pay per view card. Um, could you just give me some more details on that if you haven't already spoken about it? Uh, it's going to be a Asia focused pay per view. Um, obviously, Asia has 4.2 billion people, um, and we've been studying the data and looking at the numbers. And you know, our fan base is obviously quite large here in Asia. Um, and uh, so we want to put a really amazing uh, two-part card, the first one being free around the world, 150 countries live broadcast, um, and the second one is uh, an Asia-based pay-per-view. Okay, and uh, what was the decision process be uh, behind um, taking those two fights you'd already announced for it, you know, before it got delayed, uh, Bibi and, and Lineker and then... Um... Tanley and Tone, and they're now going to be uh, main event. Yeah, you, you know, it's just yeah. it's it's just one of these things about timing. You know, um, Gary and uh, Tanley were supposed to fight a few times already. They both, uh, you know, had injuries. You know, that fight has been postponed. Then COVID hit, and then you know, we were we scheduled again. And then Gary got hurt. Like it was just like one thing after another. And you know, we just said like, let's get this fight on, and and, and they both agreed. And and so, knock on wood that. Uh, this fight happens because i mean they've both been waiting for each other and unfortunately they, you know each other they've both gotten hurt and then of course we had covid and so it's just like let's just get the show on the road and then uh bibby was in 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 the contract negotiations for a while with us finally concluded that and he wanted to fight asip and and so did uh lineker i mean there's a real bad blood i don't know if you've been paying attention but there's real real bad blood you know old school brazil style they want to even fight in the streets of brazil um and settle it that way so there's it's it's uh you know Lineker says he's, he's gonna finish Bibby and Bibby saying he's gonna finish Lineker and, and it's very personal so uh February 11th it's gonna be fireworks and you finally got Renier de Ritter fight he'd been calling out everyone it seemed from uh middleweight up to heavyweight I think even he even called out Rod Tank but uh He's going to fight Cameron Abasov. Uh, I can take that for the middleweight title. And um, yeah, I mean, 
I guess neither of the guys has a real challenger, so I, I guess that makes more sense to just put them both together, right? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, a lot. You, you'll be surprised. A lot of people are turning down uh, uh, Renier. They don't want to fight Renier. Uh, so it's been a little bit hard for us to find him an opponent. But, of course, again, we are literally every day, every week, every month, you know, we're always constantly on the lookout for the best athletes in every weight division. And so uh, Renier will have his hands full. But, yes, I mean, uh, Cameron wanted to do a challenge Renier, and we thought, hey, that's, that, that could be a fun fight. You know, and I was getting inundated as usual on our our fight companion there about questions about Ongla. When is he fighting? Can you confirm anything? Is he going to be on that tenth anniversary? Um, he is going to be fighting, I, I believe, next month. Okay, so yeah. sooner than all right. Um, can you reveal? I, I mean, I'm presuming it's the trilogy with Big Dash, but I don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. It is a trilogy fight with Big Dash. I forgot to tell you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It, uh, you know, Vitaly's had a, a string of injuries, um, you know, in the past couple of years, and that's what what sidelined him. But he says he's 100% healthy and he's ready to t take on Angla. And so that's another fight we've been trying to make for a while. But again, uh, Vitaly's been injured uh, or has had multiple injuries, but now he's 100% healthy. Okay, so is that, that bad blood, you know, or the, I can't remember the name, Full Circle or Lights Out? You know, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I want to say it is on the February 11th card, but I'm not, I just, I have too many cards in front of me, man. And, and, and you know, uh, I don't, uh, you know, Matt Hume and his amazing team, uh, they do all the matches, you know, um, and obviously the athlete recruitment. I mean, of course, I'm involved here and there. Uh, they pull me in on for, for big fights or big signings, but on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, Matt and his uh, team are, are, are handling it. Okay, and sorry if I got time. I just wanted to ask about Khabib. Um, he he wasn't on the broadcast uh, because of COVID positive, but um, his guy did. Yeah, so so so, so he landed. Uh, yeah, this is a really unfortunate thing. You know, Khabib landed in Singapore a few days ago. He was feeling ill when he landed. He tested positive for COVID on the PCR test, um, and he, he's obviously in his hotel room right now in Singapore. Uh, he and I have been talking every day. Um, first couple of days, he felt completely terrible, terrible. Um, but today he's feeling a little bit better, but, um, yeah, I mean, he's still in his hotel room. He, he did watch the fight. He did message me and he was really happy with Seguid. And he, he also said, uh, he was blown away by the production value at one, you know, uh, from the stage to the lights and sound to the camera angles. And yeah, so he was a uh, very, um, complimentary. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for answering my questions. Nisi Isiano from IB Times. You announced a few days ago that One X is finally going to happen on March 26th. It's obvious that you guys put up the best possible fights to celebrate the promotion's 10th year anniversary. But we cannot deny the fact that we're still living in a delicate situation. It was very evident on the card slated earlier tonight. There were several fight cancellations. Is there any discussion right now in terms of implementing or considering new safety protocols, plans, or new ways to monitor the health status of fighters involved on that card, which will help one championship to at least keep the marquee fights intact and avoid cancellations in the process. You know, I, I wish I had a crystal ball, Nisi. That's a, that's a very difficult question. Uh, obviously, COVID still is around the world. Omicron is the, the best case scenario. You know, it's highly contagious, but it's very low uh, in its uh, symptoms and it's very low in its mortality rate so that is the best thing you, you 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 know we get herd immunity as a as a world um by having quote unquote a three or four day flu um and that makes you immune to covid for you know a reasonable amount of time so um i'm quite optimistic you know i have uh, uh, friends in the medical uh space and uh they've told me you know there's a lot of optimism in the air um in terms of this is how viruses adapt, uh, new viruses adapt eventually, is um, when they're highly contagious with low mortality, that's how you build herd immunity. It becomes effective the flu. So long-winded way of saying March 26th, we have high conviction, but as a safety valve, what we are doing now for every single event, just because of what happened with this event, right? We had originally 12 fights scheduled. It got four got knocked out because of um, COVID-related reasons. We are actually going to be increasing the, the number of bouts per event uh, by 30, 40% for every single show so that if there are dropouts, we, we can still end up at 12. All right, Chappie, thank you so much and more power to you. 12 for our regular shows. For, for, for 1X, 
again, we're, we're expecting right now 18 bouts. All right. Thank you so much, Shakri. Yep. For our next question, we go to Tudor Leonte from Sherdog. Tudor, go ahead. In uh, today's co-main event, Tawan Chai stopped the number one ranked bantamweight. And uh, I would like to ask, where does Tawan Chai rank in the division right now, considering that he missed weight for this fight? Well, he and I spoke briefly after the fight, and he said he, he's done with Bantamweight. He can't make it. His body's too big. Um, so he wants to go permanently to the featherweight division. Um, is there any chance he will join uh, the featherweight kickboxing Grand Prix? Mm, no, I think he wants to win the Muay Thai world title. That's his, that's his game. And... You know, now that I mentioned the Grand Prix, um, will we see another MMA Grand Prix in 2022? Definitely. We love Grand Prix. Um, and can you please tell us perhaps the, you know, the weight not, you are aiming for? Not yet, but, but, but uh, you can think of some of the stack divisions in one, and, and, and that's what we're kind of thinking right now. Our next question comes from Chinese media who ask, Zhang Jingnan has got her sixth title defense victory tonight. So who are you going to match up for her? So again, we have signed uh, uh, several uh, world-class strawweights uh, that we haven't announced yet. We will be announcing those uh, in the coming weeks. Um, in the meanwhile, Jing Nan does want to go down to Adam Waite um, and challenge for the title. It's possible, but again, um, I, I'm going to have to sit down with Jing Nan and have a talk to her. I was, again, I've been quite disappointed. Uh, of course, she is an incredible world champion, uh, you know, I think she's 17 and two, incredible KO power. Um, and I have the utmost respect for her as a human being and as a martial artist. Um, but I have to say, I've been disappointed with her lack of desire to finish or lack of desire, um, yeah, of gameness, killer instinct, last couple of fights. Next up, we're gonna go back to Dylan Bowker of My MMA News. Dylan, go ahead. Thanks so much for taking my call. I was just kind of curious because I was seeing some reports going around from, you know, Nikki Holskin about wanting to get back out there. And it seemed like something was kind of lined up in that regard. I'm kind of wondering what that next bout for Nikki would be, whether it's like a kickboxing. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, Nikki's uh, next fight has been signed, I believe. Uh, we just haven't announced it yet. So I guess that would be like a plan to like unfurl that on like a future show, something to that effect, I, I, right? I think, I think he's signed to fight in February, if I'm not mistaken. Well, fair enough. And also with much dialogue about one coming to the United States, I'm kind of wondering if any like preliminary work has been done for like a one championship event in Canada. Because as a Canadian lad, I think that'd be fun. We did briefly look at Canada uh, last year in the middle of the pandemic as a potential place we could throw an event during the pandemic. Um, but we eventually scratched it. Um, I don't foresee a Canada event, um, yeah, for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely would love to go to Canada. Just right now, we, we, we haven't, uh, we've just got so much on our plate on, on different countries. Um, different priorities right now. And also, just lastly here, I'm kind of wondering, like, what the situation is with Rug Rug. I only ask because there seemed to be so much momentum and then kind of the shocking ending with Grishenko. Like, is, has there been any dialogue about getting Rug Rug back into the circle? Yes, I believe Rug Rug has been offered a fight. I may be wrong. Uh, but yeah, of course, we definitely want to get him in there. He's definitely a viral sensation. He's obviously, you know, a monster. Um, and he did have a controversial loss. Would love to see him back in back in action. Appreciate the insights, Chadri. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next, we have a text question coming in from Ivan Saldesheno from Dugout Philippines, who asks, you're going to open the Singapore Indoor Stadium to a full attendance at 1X on March 26th. Does this mean you're ready to go on tour again, i.e. Jakarta, Philippines, and KL? We, are, we, we do have plans, yes, to throw events outside of Singapore this year. Um, you know, we'll announce when those plans are firm, but... That is the current plan, yeah, is to go back on our touring schedule, um, tons of events around across Asia, but also around the world. Chatri, a massive thank you and a big thank you to our media from around the world. Cheers for your questions and good night.